The wind creates rolling waves over the surface of one of Wisconsin's last remaining prairies. Native flowers and grasses color the landscape. Large open oaks spread welcoming crowns to all within reach. A wetland formed by a retreating glacier is a reminder of a time when great bison walked two million acres of Wisconsin ground. At irregular intervals along the trail of these rare ecosystems, an extraordinary sound breaks the soft hum of the landscape. The exhibits, surrounded by prairie, allow visitors a rare opportunity to see 15 crane species of the world in one place. These are the living relics of a time dating back to the dinosaurs. Enter here and you will pass through the gateway of the 220-acre complex of the International Crane Foundation, the World Center for Crane Conservation. The International Crane Foundation became a reality because of the passion and persistence of two young men in 1973. Their commitment sparked a worldwide effort to bring cranes back from the brink of extinction. The International Crane Foundation is a private organization that I co-founded with Ron Sowie back in 1973. We have a very simple mission to help the endangered cranes of the world. To do that, we have established a species bank of captive birds here in Baraboo, Wisconsin. We work on educational and research programs worldwide to understand the wild cranes and to communicate their needs to the people. Cranes are among the most endangered birds of the world. By 1976, the ICF had successfully bred five different species of threatened or endangered cranes. 1982 marked a unique challenge for ICF. That year, less than 100 whooping cranes were left in the world, and a female whooper named Tex was the last of her genetic line. The problem was, she was hand-reared by people and hopelessly imprinted on humans and refused to court with male crane suitors. Fortunately, the ICF's George Archipald volunteered to take the time to be Texas human mate. So he spent 15 hours a day for six weeks with the people-smitten female whooper. Tex was artificially inseminated with frozen whooping crane sperm flown in from Patoxent Wildlife Research Center in Maryland. She finally laid a fertile egg and her offspring was named G. Wiz. Now, G. Wiz is helping to continue the line of this most rare species of cranes. What is a crane? Elusive? Spectacular? Captivating? Most obvious is their long legs for wading. Their graceful necks, impressive beaks, and stately stature have been prompting legends about the crane being a symbol of contemplation and wisdom. Most have a coiled windpipe that makes a trumpet so loud it can be heard a mile away. Cranes mate for life and perform beautiful courtship dances bobbing, jumping, and throwing their heads back, leaping up, parachuting back down, and spreading their wings as if to some ancient song only their ears can hear. Cranes are the national birds of several countries and symbolic of fidelity, long life, good luck, and happiness in many cultures. While cranes have held much fascination and inspiration over the ages, they hold much more practical importance for all of us.
cranes tell us a lot about the health of many of the world's wetland ecosystems because most crane species depend on wetlands for survival. Not only do wetlands provide food for cranes, but wetlands also provide a safe place for cranes to roost, build nests, and raise their young. If crane populations decline, scientists know that other plant and animal life living in wetlands may be in trouble as well. The formula for saving the world's cranes is complex, requiring equal parts of education, research, habitat protection, captive breeding, and reintroduction into the wild. Uh, often the conflicts between wildlife and people are the result of how one looks at a problem or lack of alternative ideas. So through education, you give people larger perspective, help them think of new ideas, and again, get them talking to other people, and together, usually you can come up with good solutions. Education is vital to saving cranes, and the International Crane Foundation uses every opportunity to be a classroom to the world. Crane experts, government officials, organizations, and concerned people across the globe take advantage of the opportunity to learn and partner with the ICF. Uh, without ICF, we uh, wouldn't uh, begin our work with Siberia and Crane because that time we had no idea uh, how to keep cranes in captivity, how to breed them. Uh, now we have our good uh, captive flock of Siberian cranes there. Uh, I see I've uh, supported with uh, uh, some equipment, with technology, with ideas. The ICF Library is an international clearinghouse for crane information. Visitors of all ages are welcome to see exhibits and participate in guided tours. The Whooping Crane exhibit allows a close-up view of the rarest crane in the world in a wetland habitat. All summer, chicks can be viewed in the chick yard as they are fed and exercised by their surrogate chick parents. Videos and slides are available for viewing or purchase, and the gift shop is always a popular stop for visitors. Special educational events like Crane Fest are attended by hundreds of people every year at the ICF to welcome back all the migrating birds and learn about cranes and wetlands. The ICF's on-site research experts focus on finding better ways to breed and care for captive cranes. Among their many scientific contributions, they were the first to handle the international transfer of crane eggs, the first to use crane puppets to raise captive bred chicks to prepare them for socializing with wild cranes, and first to breed brolgas and black neck cranes in the United States. Most of the ICF's research is done in cooperation with crane working group members from other countries, governments, and institutions. Loss of habitat is the single greatest reason why cranes are threatened. China has drained nearly 90% of its wetlands to make room for farms and towns. In other countries, including the US, land development has taken its toll. Humans don't always recognize the value of wetlands. In reality, wetlands are pulsating with life. They're nature's nursery filled with plant and animal life that can be found nowhere else. Nearly 70% of the fish caught in the ocean fisheries spend part of their lives in coastal wetlands. Wetlands act like a natural sponge, slowing down and absorbing flood water. Wetlands can also remove disease-bearing bacteria and neutralize heavy metals and pesticides. Wetlands provide us with fish, waterfowl, edible plants, and wild grains to eat. Saving cranes means saving wetlands. However, saving crane habitat is a real challenge because cranes are migratory birds and move across international borders. Their survival depends on international cooperation. 
The ICF has sparked the protection of crane habitat in dozens of countries around the world by helping form alliances and friendships even in politically polarized nations. Besides loss of wetlands, hunting, trapping, poisoning, and collisions with utility lines are just a few of the other dangers cranes face as they migrate. Off in the distance from the ICF entrance is a cluster of buildings known as Crane City. Although this area is not open to the public, it is the heart of the ICF's captive breeding program, and there's never a dull moment here. Cranes raised here are a critical source of birds for reintroduction into the wild. Video monitoring allows viewing of the cranes with a minimum of human disturbance. Costume rearing of chicks also prevents human imprinting of cranes. Once the egg starts hatching, then we peek through the incubation doorways or windows and see how far along it is. And usually by that time we're wearing a costume. And the costume essentially covers the human features. Um, we don't look like a crane, um, although we try to because we do use um, a puppet. And this is what we want the birds to fixate on, is the puppet instead of looking at my face. And what we try to do then is use this costume to always check on the birds and to interact with them. And a person in a costume becomes as much of a crane as they possibly can. The ICF also sends eggs overseas for other institutions to raise and release into the wild. Captive breeding and restocking is improving what once looked like a bleak future for cranes. Pass through the gateway. Watch the sky. Discover the beauty of wetlands. Enter the world of cranes. And experience the wonder. <laughs>